Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Learning Pyra and Mithra from Scratch series. In this series, I'm documenting my journey from going from a complete noob to hopefully making the Chicago Power Rankings with just Pyra and Mithra. If you learn anything new in this video series, please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let's jump in. Today's chapters, we will be talking about my results at the Weekly, the recent Steve controversy, how to learn from VODs, and my strategy going into week three of learning this character. So let's go over my tournament results from last night first. This was my third weekly playing exclusively Pyra and Mithra. And remember, last week I went 0-2 in my bracket, so this week I actually did a lot better. I picked up one, two, three wins to go three and two, and I placed fifth place in the bracket, which I was actually pretty happy with. I was seeded 8th going into it, so I outplaced my seed, and not only that, I placed high enough that I wasn't allowed into the amateur bracket. So that felt like a good milestone for me coming into like week 3, where last time people were maybe having their doubts that I was making progress because I, I went 0-2, but here I am and I'm actually moving up and I'm getting some wins, and I'm maybe proving what I said in my other video about how my, my O2 result didn't mean that I was getting worse and that I couldn't make progress. So hopefully this, uh, this streak is going to continue. Uh, let's look at my results week by week. So my first week I went 1 and 2 to get 9th. Then I went O2 and I got 13th. And last night I went 3-2 and got 5th. So the goal from now is that I want to try to get top 3 next so I can get into the payout. And then hopefully... I don't know, maybe in like another month or two, we'll pick up our first tournament win. In theory, at least. So that's what happened last night, and now let's get into the Steve controversy. So uh, I saw this tweet last night that I thought was actually pretty funny. Uh, Tweak loses to Steve, Gluto loses to Steve, every top player gets upset by Steve, but these fucking dumb fuck Steve mains say he's top 25. Like, bro, you are carried beyond belief. I promise you you're not good at the game, and the character is just so insanely broken. And so, like, this tweet is kind of a meme, obviously, but it kind of started a lot of discussion on Smash Twitter and on Reddit about people kind of comparing Steve to Smash 4 Bayonetta, and I even saw some people, like, clamoring for a, for a ban for Steve. So I kind of want to just weigh in on my thoughts on this topic, because... I, it's kind of a way that I think about Smash when I play, is that some characters cheat. And, and now what I mean by this is, like, when you play a normal match in Smash against, like, let's use Mario, because he's, like, the most basic character in the game. You, you can approach the matchup against Mario much in the same way that you approach matchups of most of the cast. You kind of, like, you, you play him in a very similar way. However... Some characters, they kind of play outside of the general rules of Smash, and so you kind of have to approach the matchups a little bit differently than you do against the basic characters, like Mario, or maybe Marth, Lucina, characters like that. So if you're unprepared to fight against this kind of character, you will lose. It doesn't matter if like the skill gap between you and the other player is really massive, if you don't understand how to properly like take the way that they cheat at the game and like beat that, then you're just going to lose the matchup. It doesn't matter if you're good. So lo looking at just like the giant cast of characters in Ultimate, just some characters that fall into this kind of cheating category that I think about. Like for one, Diddy Kong, I always thought he was kind of a cheater ever since I played him in Brawl. Because what he has that no other character has is the banana, right? So if you don't know how to fight against the banana, Diddy can kind of just throw it mindlessly at you. And, like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. He's going to hit you. He's going to kill you. You get more frustrated, and then you start running at him harder and harder. And then you're getting hit by more and more bananas, and you just lose the game, right? So who else can kind of, like, cheat in the ultimate? So Ice Climbers kind of cheat, right? Because they're the only character with this. There's two of them. So if you don't really know what you're doing and you play a good Ice Climbers player, you're probably going to lose. Uh, Min Min kind of cheats because she's got this obscene range that no other characters have. So you kind of have to figure out how to play around that. And obviously Steve... Steve is Steve, right? 
So Steve kind of takes this concept of cheating to the highest level in Ultimate, in my opinion. Because if you don't know what you're doing against Steve, he really can just, like, beat you super hard. And we see this against, like, even the top players, like Tweak last night. So beating Steve, sometimes, to me, it can feel like it's kind of a matchup check rather than a skill check. But you kind of have to keep in mind that, like, this, this concept of skill only really applies to those basic characters I was talking about before. So you really, like, your overall skill in Ultimate, if you want to have a rounded out skill set, you have to know all these matchups. You have to know how to beat these cheating characters. It's all kind of part of the game, and in placing well and consistently, you really have to know all these matchups and just play them all pretty well. So if you're going to a tournament and trying to do decent, I really think you need to have a very good understanding of how to fight Steve. And if you don't, you will fall just like all the other top players that have before. So do I think this is like worthy of a ban, or is it comparing it comparable to Smash 4 Bayonetta? I mean, not yet. I... I'm not going to try to say that like in the future that nothing is going to happen. I don't know. I Right now, I don't think it's anything close to happening, but I don't know. You never know where the metagame can progress in like a year or two down the road. So we'll just wait and see. But for now, just like learn the matchup against Steve. And if you want to fight him decently in a bracket, you have to, to know the ins and outs of how he works. So yeah, that's that's just my thoughts on the Steve thing. It's not, definitely not a ban for now. Anyways, uh, let's go to, to learning some new stuff. So we're going to talk today about watching your tournament VODs. So watching your tournament sets is crucial to improving in Smash, in my opinion. People, when you like ask someone how a match went, a lot of times they'll talk about the match like, oh yeah, well, I, I did this and this, and then he did that, and then I did this. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. And then you watch the setback, and you realize that, like, n it was nothing like that, right? So, like, sometimes even I'll, like, remember, like, oh, I I was doing pretty well in that set. Even though, like, I lost, it was pretty close. And then I go back and watch it, and, like, no, I just got completely destroyed. So, like, sometimes people just remember the matches completely incorrectly, which is why I think it's really important to go back and actually watch all your matches and study them. This is, this is what I did a lot in Smash 4 in what I'm calling my Tournament Fiend strategy. So people that don't know me from Smash 4, a lot of people knew me as like the Tournament Fiend because I was going to like three to four locals a week plus like a regional every Saturday. So I was going to so many tournaments and I was getting on stream so many times. And, and just overall by the end, I had attended well over 500 tournaments. And... People are like, oh, wow, you got good from just attending that many tournaments. That's kind of crazy. Like, maybe if I attend that many tournaments, I can get good. But honestly, my improvement did not come from the tournaments themselves, but from analyzing my VODs. So when you go to 500 tournaments and you're placing well, you get put on stream very often. And so every day, the day after a tournament, I would take the stream VODs and I would study them pretty hard. It was really important to me to watch every match and not just my exciting wins. I think a lot of people, like, if they lose a tough match, or, like, a last hit game five scenario, like, a lot of people don't like to watch back those losses, especially if it was, like, a really big tournament and, like, it was to make top eight, they needed to win this last hit scenario and they lost and they get all depressed and don't even want to think about the match. But really, those are the matches that you can learn the most from. So I think you should go and watch every match, but especially the matches that you lose. If you only watch your matches with exciting wins, you're not really like learning that much because you already won in that matchup. Losing matches, you have a lot more to learn from. So why I'm talking about this this time is because while I was at Scrims, the weekly I attend, uh, I got my first... Uh, a stream match against a PR player. So now for the first time I have a good Pyramithra VOD of mine that I can go back and watch. So how do you approach watching a match? Now I'm not going to claim that I'm some super expert and that this is the correct and only way to do it. This is just personally how I approach watching the VODs. So in my opinion I think that so much happens 
in each set that you can't really like just watch it once at full speed and really comprehend everything that there is to learn from it. I think it's important to watch it multiple times and each time you watch it, you kind of just zero in on one thing and one thing only and then try to learn as much as you can about that one thing. Then you can go back, focus on something else and take notes on that. So when I was in Smash 4 attending 500 tournaments and being on stream so many times, I was going and watching each of those sets multiple times over just so that I could get as much out of it as possible. So what kind of things do I focus on? So one of the biggest ones I always think about is why did you get hit, right? So was your spacing wrong? So like think about your spacing. Maybe you spaced out your move wrong and that's why you were taking damage. Uh, was it just like a bad option at the time? Like do you have no reason to throw out a really laggy move and now you're taking a big punishment? Think about that. Maybe you were really predictable in the, the way you were approaching and you were getting punished for it nonstop. Then you can think about trying to change how you approach. So the why is the most important question to be asking yourself. So why did you get hit? Think about every single time that you took damage, why it happened, and how you can fix that in the future. Next, I try to think about like where can you press the advantage harder? So like if you win neutral, like 90% of the time, but you're only dealing 5% on each hit, like you're punishing with a jab, you're not going to win the game if they're able to hit you with like their smash attack in that 1 out of 10 situations. So you have to think about every time you win neutral, you want to be taking it as far as possible. So when I'm watching the VODs, I'm thinking like, okay, well, I punished him with this move. Did I have time to maybe use this slightly laggier but stronger move? Or maybe I could have used this other combo starter and gotten more damage that way. And so you kind of think about the ways that you could do a little bit better, get more damage when you win neutral, or maybe even like you're juggling or ledge trapping, maybe you could have spaced yourself better there. So how do you press that advantage harder to get more out of all your hits? Always pay attention to that. How can you capitalize on the other character's weaknesses harder? So learning matchups, I learned a lot from just watching myself and asking like, why am I losing this matchup, right? So like if I'm playing against the Steve, going back to the Steve matchup, like what was I doing wrong in the matchup? I watch it, I see what he's doing, I see where he's getting ahead, and then I always take notes on that. And kind of with matchups though, if you don't really know where to begin, you also can just go back and watch a better players play the matchup and compare what you're doing to what they're doing and then try to incorporate some of those. So kind of think about the difference between how you approach the matchup and how a top player is approaching the same matchup. Finally, I also think it's really important to just think about what did you do correctly? Because if you're going back and watching these VODs and you're only thinking about what you did wrong, it kind of gets a little depressing. Like, oh my god, I'm like this terrible player. I'm never going to win. I can't do this right. But at the same time, like sometimes when you're watching those sets back, I think it's important to just appreciate those moments where you're like, oh wow, I, I did this crazy ledge guard that worked out. Or like I had this crazy good read. And just like appreciate those moments and like recognize, okay, I'm, I'm good at doing this. And just knowing that you can have that confidence going into your next matches that like, okay, I know I can do this well. And then when it comes to the matchup, you'll do it well again. And here are some useful YouTube hotkeys that a lot of people don't know. I, I even see some streamers sometimes that are doing VOD reviews where they're just like skipping around by, by dragging the slider. But it, it's really efficient to use the hotkeys on YouTube. So here, here's what I use is the space bar, you just use that to pause, unpause the video. The arrow keys is a pretty common one. It rewinds or skips five seconds. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can use J and L to rewind or skip for 10 seconds. So it kind of just helps to if you, if you want to watch a situation a couple times over to, to really pick apart what's going on, you might want to just use like J, rewind 10 seconds, watch it again, Boom, J, rewind, 10 seconds, watch it again. Or you can skip past something, like skip past when you're in the character select screen or whatever. Uh, also, sometimes if a lot is going on, it's it can really help to slow down the video. So 
instead of going over like clicking the gear in the bottom right corner and then choosing your speed you can just use these buttons which is like the shift and comma and shift and period but it's the what do you call these the, the, the bracket things. I don't even know what you call those. There's a word for them. Anyways, if you press those, it can speed up or slow down the video. So it's useful to know that. And then, of course, if you really want to slow it down, you can use the comma and the period as a frame rewind and frame advance. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is my strategy for week three. So now that I have a, a VOD that I can watch playing a PR player on stream, I want to start spending more time analyzing my own play. Uh, that's something I haven't really done at this point. I kind of spent the last week focusing a lot harder on just like watching top players. So I was watching as many different top players as I could. And I think I finally kind of built up in my head like this is the general way I'm supposed to be playing Pirate and Mithra. But I don't really know how I'm executing that in game because when I'm playing and I'm doing well, I feel like I'm doing it properly. but Again, you don't always remember how the matches win exactly. So so going back and watching it, I can start to pick apart what exactly it is that I'm doing well, what exactly I'm doing bad. And so what I'm going to do then is find my weaknesses and start to focus my practice in the next week on correcting those weaknesses. So maybe I'm going to find out that my neutral is just not as good and so I can focus on the options I'm picking in neutral. Maybe my combo game isn't up to par so I can focus on my combos. and. Just like that, I'll just watch myself. I have just one bod right now, so I'm gonna watch that and learn what I can. And then, even if like, if you don't have tournament vods to watch, you can just go in and play like a friendly set, but just play it full try hard, right? Like some people kind of like unintentionally dick around in friendlies a little bit, but if you just go in and say, "All right, I'm just gonna play this best two out of three full try hard," I'm gonna record it, and then that's it then you can go back and watch it in the same way that you do a tournament set. So maybe sometime in the week, I'll just find like a Wi-Fi match and I'll just play it as hard as I can and then I'll record it and then I can study that back. Usually I do want to be focusing more on offline and real tournament matches, but right now I just don't have the, the, like the large library of videos that I had in Smash 4 to study from. So I will have to start making my own, but... I think this is going to be the best strategy moving forward is just see what I'm doing wrong and working on getting it better. So that is my plan going into week three. We're going to see if we can place better than fifth next time, but I felt like this week was overall pretty solid. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better and we can start slowly climbing the rankings and work towards getting a PR win. I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.